Each year, fires, electrical failures, results in the loss of lives and billions of dollars at property damage. Brian's a little busy here, uh, but it's, it's kind of giving us some data. Um, electrical equipment causes 10% of fires in homes and structures. Uh, it causes 18% of civilian deaths. So, 10% uh, of civilian injuries. 19% of property damage. Wiring and equipment accounts for 7% of fires and 9% of deaths. Cords and plugs, so 1% of fires at home. Don't know why we have AFCI, but no story. And 7% of deaths. I don't know what the categories could be for deaths, but one could be electrical. I don't know what the other category would be. But I got a feeling if we add the electrical category together and compare it to air conditioning or plumbing, or it's probably disproportionately high uh, as an industry yeah. compared to the other industries. Well, because we're moving electrons, and so it's great stuff and it's cool, but let's understand the applications and the hazards associated with that. Um, you know, you have a cord, we probably maybe eventually get a better picture here. Um, but right now what we have, we have, and there's heat. See, remember we talked about incandescent, which was the glowing from heat, you know, illumination? Well, you know, you can have terminals, and you, you don't terminate it properly, or something takes place as you plug something in. You get a, a, people plug it in and unplug it and plug it in and unplug it over some times. You know, it really wasn't designed to be used. Usually when you take something, you put it in a receptacle, you, you, you plug it in, and, and you're done. You don't really plug it in and take it out and plug it in. It really wasn't designed to be kind of like a switch where you, you kind of insert it like that. So there can be failures and connections, and then we have fires. Here's an example, which is a common practice in the electrical industry, and it's disappointing, uh, and, and it's something that the National Electric Code in 11014D talks about torquing of terminals. And electricians are, are just, they're not taught torquing, and torquing means where... Eric, tell me what the word torque means. <coughs> okay, uh, torquing would be, let's, let's see, we have a slide here. Uh, don't have a tool. Mario, let's, let's get a slide there on torquing, some, you know, slides from the code that we can show. It's a tool. And if you ever worked on anything mechanical, things need to be tightened to a certain value. If you went too far, then you're going to strip, you're going to strip it. If you don't go, you don't put enough pressure on it, well, then it's not going to serve its intended purpose. So when you have electrical terminations that's shown here, it's really important that the electrical installer, he has a tool. And there's instructions. There's information that tells you, hey, tighten this not to what you think it should be because each person is different. I've seen guys right. that are like three times my size, probably four times my size, massive individuals. And, and when they take something, they tighten it down, it would be probably two or three times what I would have considered to be sufficient. So we can't allow individuals to be making decisions. So fires are often caused at terminals. They're not generally caused in the middle of equipment. They're usually caused at terminals. So, <clears throat> so Mike, the threads, the threads have friction, and the, the, fre the threads can be deformed. So if you tighten something up too much, the metal can actually deform and weaken. Torque is given with two units, for example, pound-feet. There's a, there's a force and there's a distance. And so the concept is if you have a wrench which is one foot long, the handle is one foot long, and then you apply a force of 10 feet on the end, well, now you have 10 foot-pounds worth of torque, which represents the twisting force. You could also have a wrench which was two feet long at five pounds, so it's 10 pound feet. Torque, um, the reason it's so important, like say you have friction between the threads, and if you over tighten, you can actually damage the threads. And if you under tighten, well then you have a loose connection. So there's a, there's a sweet spot that we're trying to That's hit. That's key, there's a sweet spot. But we don't know what the sweet spot is. Physically, we have to have something that tells us 
you hit the sweet spot. Right, and the difficulty, it's, it's very easy in today's world when you're building something new, uh, pretty much you have all your, uh, your numbers, you have your charts, you, you know your metallurgy, but when you're dealing with a, an existing piece of equipment that say you have to disconnect the termination and reconnect it, sometimes you don't know the metallurgy, you don't know, uh, there's all sorts of things you just simply don't know, and so we try to figure out in a world today where torque is so important, how do we work with old equipment? And, that, and that's a challenge. All right, yeah. Tom, I'm gonna have you talk about torquing terminals, if you could, after Mario has his comment, what do we do when something was already installed? 7DB, are you familiar with that? What? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah and, and I'm just picking back off of Eric's point of if you over torque it, um, it there's something called metal relaxation. So the, the, the conductor torquing, you, you torque the conductor, it relaxes, and it's perfect in there. Because it, it was designed. It was designed for Knowing that. it was a copper and then knowing this terminal or an aluminum, we know what we got to do to get the sweet spot. It's kind of like, okay, we're going to go a number, but in reality, it's going to, the metal's going to relax. Yes. Okay, and Tom, talk to us about, well, okay, it relaxed, we got it torqued. By the way, you're an apprentice probably looking at this. More than likely, hardly any of your guys that you're working with are torquing terminals. You are going to be the new leaders. And you try to tell these guys, hey, where's our torquing tool? You guys are going to torque that? They're going to give you all kinds of crap. Because they're like, ah, we don't do that. We know what we, we got to do. We got to do it. Okay, then you realize, okay, don't ask that guy any code questions. That guy is probably not a leader that you're really looking to go for. You're looking for somebody who is torquing, who understands the concept there. So, so let's assume that... Was or wasn't, you go to an installation and you had to take the wires off, Tom, and then we had to reconnect the wires. And well, do we retorque it every year as we go along? Ooh. Go ahead, talk to Ooh. us. Yeah, no. So, so um, whenever you, you think about when you first install, uh, say, a conductor under a lug, a termination, right? And you torque that termination, you're done. There's no retorquing. There's no verifying or checking the torque. Now, if you have to verify torque, 70B gives us some instructions on what to do and you never go to the original torque values because for, I think you mentioned it, Mario, that you can over torque and there's the relaxation. There's all these different things that can happen when you start tightening that termination point, right? You, you can over torque, okay? So, if you, ver if you want to verify an existing termination, there are a set of rules that you follow. You never go to the original torque value. I believe it's 90% is Correct. the way 70B refers to it. Now, if you question your termination, oh, thought, then you... Oh, you're into the job. You don't know if they torqued it. You're not sure. Right. Now, okay. you can follow... You question it. You, and, can, and, you and, can follow 70B. Yes. Right. Okay, you can follow 70B. But if you still don't feel that comfort level, right, and, and you want to be sure, then you remove the termination, you cut your wire, you restrip it, and then you re-land it. Because if you take a conductor out of that termination, it's already deformed, uh, right? Uh, and I don't care if it's a stranded or a solid copper uh, conductor. It doesn't matter. You don't take a stranded copper conductor take it out of the lug, and then straighten it up and, and you know, put your pliers on there and twist it. No, no, no. How do you know about that? <laughs> How do you know about that? So, so you, you, you make a nice, fresh installation. And, and then everybody worries about, well, do I have enough conductor, right? And that's why we always pull a little bit more conductor. Okay. And, you, and you may leave that little bit of slack okay. in there okay. so that if you do have to re-terminate something, which is inevitably, it's probably going to happen. If you're replacing a circuit breaker, you're replacing a switch. Yeah, yeah. You don't take it off and say, I'm going to replace this and then just use, you, you clean that, 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 uh, that wire up for yourself so that you can make a nice, fresh connection. connection. Yeah. There's something I actually haven't heard any of you guys say yet, and, and that is this. So that term is called cold flux. When you put pressure mm -hmm. on a metal, yeah. it actually acts like a liquid to some degree and it settles. And so if you loosen it up and then tighten it again, that metal's going to move that same amount, and it's going to move that same amount, and that conductor gets smaller and smaller and smaller and thinner and thinner and thinner. 
and eventually you got a piece of aluminum foil <laughs> instead of aluminum conductor, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. is the reason why you, you go to 90% or you take it out and re-terminate it because every time you tighten it, it does the same thing, the same thing. So they've calculated the first time you tighten it, it's going to move this much, it's going to relax this much, and that's the correct amount of pressure to prevent heat from being generated at that contact point. And, 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 and the other very important thing that a lot of people forget about is the, in, the uh, termination point, whatever it is you're terminating, whether it's a wiring device, a breaker, whatever, will have instructions and tell you what size conductors that lug can handle, right. whether it can be a stranded conductor or a solid conductor, whether it can be a fine stranded conductor, right. whether you can take two conductors right. of dissimilar sizes, right, and put them under the same lug. There's a lot of, you know, terminations Somebody asked me to, to do to do a presentation on terminations. They said you have a two hour. I'm thinking two hours. Uh, two hours? <laughs> you want two hours of terminations? Give me a break, you know. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Uh, start telling stories about my last trip? We didn't have enough time, you know, because you have the, the the materials. Whether it's a copper conductor, whether it's aluminum conductor, the size of the conductors, the number of conductors, the stranding of the conductor. Oh. There's so many details. And, and, and torque plays a key yeah, role and, in all of that. And, and Mike, just a, another quick point, and it's a segue to our next slide. One of the ways, we're talking about verifying if something is not properly torqued. One of the ways you do that is infrared. But one second, before we get there, <clears throat> let me just make a couple of comments on here. <laughs> I can't tell you, probably in most industries, they have a time that they shut things down and they kind of do some kind of maintenance. Mm -hmm. They go around and they retorque everything again. Yeah. And they yeah. think that they're supposed to retorque everything to get it all torqued down. It's like, no, like you said, yeah. Tom, look, yeah, you, don't you keep put that. it in one time, you torque it one time. Well, how yeah. do you know if you should do, well, you would then, if you would question it, then under load condition, you would go and then you would do an infrared to find, okay, that one terminal clearly, now we don't know if it's a torque issue, we don't know if it's overloaded, we don't know if there's a problem with the terminals, we, we don't know what it is, but we know that we don't go around and re-torque anything. And once, one last comment I want to say. We're spending quite a bit of time, more than I thought, and, and Tom, you brought up some great points. Guys, this is the number one cause of a fire. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is not yeah. complicated. You do yeah. all this other stuff, great. You follow the code, almost. You do all kinds of stuff, and then you take a wire that is carrying current. We don't want that light, that that terminal to become incandescent, as the Greek term is back in the 1790s, right? We need to terminate it properly. And and, and another thing is, uh, Tom, you used the word 70B. That's NFPA, this is NFPA 70, okay? That's what it's, it's just a number. And they have an NFPA 70B. We'll talk about other standards. And, and, and we need to bring some slides in here, Brian, about the NFPA 70B slides, about the 90%. And I don't know if we know what that section number yes, uh, is. Mari, what is that section yeah, number that in section 70B? Is 13.4? No? No, no. no it's 8.11. Eight point eleven three. Okay. Eight point eleven three. Somebody watching this video is going to have access to seven dB. You right. know what I mean? If you have to go to eight point eleven three, it's going to say what we just said. Well, Tom actually brought up more things that I hadn't thought about. Which, but we're going to cover that. Well, we won't cover here. But when we get into the National Electrical Code. It's 110.14D, and there's also, well, 110.14 really has a lot of information on terminals. So anybody else have a comment, or we just move on? Just one real quick comment. There, there are other uh, items in 70B. If you, uh, if you have an art, a connection which is already torqued, you can also use a special meter. It's, it's a low-resistance meter, and you can do a test on the conductivity of the termination, and that's an acceptable method of checking the termination. I did not know that. It, it just, the methods, there are, there are a lot of different methods. The cost to employ those methods yeah, right. is, is, you know, you're not going to do that on every no, 15, no. 20 amp circuit or no, every no. receptical, <laughs> right, 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 right? Right, so uh, thermography is always, is, is often good, but there's a lot of ways to, to not do thermography correct. Right, you, you have need to, have to be drawing current. You need to have a certain percentage of the load current flowing through that termination. 
And, and those little details are always missed. Yeah, well, you can't just send the person out there and get a picture yeah. of that. Well, wait a minute now. <laughs> it's, con it's context you test also that? <laughs> because you can't do thermography before the building is in, in operation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the low resistivity test is great if you can turn the power off. Yep. But if you can't, right. you're screwed. <laughs> you know, and the, tor yeah. the torquing is great because it's easy and it's cheap, but the power can't be on, which requires a shutdown or first-time installation. So... There's applications The for best all. thing is just to do it right the first time. There you go. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a concept. I mean, <laughs> <What's wrong? laughs> well, those of you apprentices, your guys are not doing it right, uh, more than likely. Now, one last thing, and maybe you guys can check. Tom, you are on the 70 B foot panel there. Is there anything about witnessing that I pick a Sharpie and I mark it so that somebody knows, theoretically, that might have been done? Is there anything in 70 B that says, well, I don't believe it? there's a specific requirement that says you need to mark that. We'll have to get That's a slide a here, practice. Brian, add in here, witness that mark. would show a witness picture. Mark. It is called yeah. a witness mark. Yeah, the, yeah, I don't know if it's in a, in a standard anywhere. Mm. I'm just saying I that the practice in the industry is that when somebody is torquing, they usually are a pretty yeah. smart type of person. I mean, they're, they're, they're really qualified. And they torque it and they take a little yeah. Sharpie and they just kind of go across the connection, right. the, the lug and then the terminals and they, yep. they swipe yeah. it there. And then you can see a witness mark. And I got some great photos. And, and, and I can read it here straight off the code, Mike, real quick. Okay. Um, section from 70B, uh, oh. 8.11.1.2. After tying, after tying to initial torque, mark a straight line that spans the screw or bolt as well as the stationary part of the connection or termination. This mark provides evidence if the screw or bo bolt has moved after the proper torque has been applied. Okay. Well, Tom didn't know that. Yeah. You know what? We may have moved some of that into annex material. So, and, I, and I'd have to look because we just went through the There's a the new whole... 70B coming out, and Tom's yep. on the panel. So, but either way, we now have some information. All right, let's get back to work, guys.